All right. Hello. So before us, we have an odd one out. So this odd one out question here is basically a paragraph, a short paragraph, it seems, that has been split into its constituent sentences, then shuffled, rearranged, that is, and one imposter sentence has been added, included in this uh, in this collection that does not belong to this paragraph. So we need to find uh, that imposter sentence. So let us see if we can accomplish the same. So the thing with odd one outs is that uh, most people take the conventional approach and the orthodox road dictates that we first arrange, try to arrange the uh, paragraph, the, the external sentence with standing. And then uh, while doing that, which makes it all the more difficult since one sentence does not naturally belong to the continuity. So it's more difficult than a parajumbal problem. So this boils down the odd one out problem to a difficult, the uh, uh, extra and extra difficult parajumbal problem followed by a small odd one out problem. So it makes a bigger problem into two problems. Now uh, that is grave and uh, that approach, although ideal, uh, that you first find the order and then find which one doesn't fit in the order, which one is creating disruptions in the order, you know, which is posing difficulty, presenting difficulty and not letting the order the sequence make sense. So eliminate that one, which doesn't fit. But can we find what doesn't fit in a continuity without actually knowing that directional continuity, without having that sequence, without putting sentences in order? Can we directly devise a more time efficient method that is more suitable for the cat? That does not require us to order sentences and directly instead solve the odd one out. So let us uh, try to do that. So for the first step is to uh, identify words that occur in across sentences. So we need to find most frequent words. So we can uh, what we can see here is that uh, it talks about uh, Buddha occurs I think uh, three times in these sentences, and uh, then uh, there is not some uh, lion occurs like lion occurs two times. And uh, a lot of uh, things do not, uh, there is not a, there's not a lot that is common. So that's a good thing, actually. If there's a lot in common, then, uh, you know, that, that is useless. If, if something occurs in everything, then that is useless. But the best thing is that when something occurs in three or four things, right? So you can eliminate like this one doesn't belong here. But here it occurs one or two. So again, that is also useless in the other end of the spectrum. So what we do is we try to find referentials. Now, Referentials are words that are, uh, you know, prepositions, conjunctions, pronouns that depend, their existence depend on some other word. So then they don't give a complete meaning of their own. They don't have an independent uh, semantic existence. Like uh, they don't make a sense like that. Right. So what uh, we need to do is uh, we need to find such words and check if the reference that they're invoking, like the referential, the referee that the referential is invoking agrees with it. Like, so this approach is very useful for continuity where, for example, you have a sentence like he is going to be late today so you can be pretty sure that since he is used the word that he is referring would be a male and a single male singular person one male so you have to find a sentence that has one male exactly one male and that sentence will immediately precede the sentence with uh, he at least one sentence with he will be immediately preceded and all the other sentences will be indirectly preceded by that sentence so you can make the order but here we don't have to find the order since we are saving time we need to be time efficient so but still referentials will come of use to us even in odd one out not just in parajambles so let's see if we can use referentials to uh, get uh, get to us without directly ordering it so uh, there is an it so whenever there is a referential i always ask you that you ask a question what does it refer to? So it, there cannot be an unreferenced reference in the first uh, part, obviously. So it might have been done out of a sense of reverence. So what might have been done out of a sense of reverence, right? So we uh, we just uh, try to connect something here. So uh, we need to find what fits this it. It is singular, neuter gender, right? Singular, neuter gender pronoun. So Buddha cannot be it. He will always be he. Right. So the Buddha we know uh, that Gaut Siddhartha Gautama, that Buddha is a male classically. So he will always be a he. And then, uh, so a lion, lion is an animal. Uh, lion can be it, right? Lion can be it. It's an animal. So it can be uh, used with it. And it is also, it is used to refer to, uh, you know, animals. So it, and uh, there is a lion here. Right, and there is a lion here. So, which of these two lines fits that uh, it? Is there anything else that fits? No, right. Uh, 
i think uh, the whole art and art this whole art can also i think uh, you know fit it dts can fit no dts cannot fit because dts are plural and even then even if had they been it would have not have been correct buddha cannot fit earliest iconography cannot be it because it's a general word so it's very specific here so let us see uh, what uh, this whole art line or it what is referred so okay now uh, we don't have a clear cut connect here okay right so let's move on to a different uh, shade of reasoning so what we can do is uh, let's just see let's just try to put it in a continuity okay uh, not directly putting it in a continuity just establish one uh, one pair if if you find one the key is that if you find one linkage you can eliminate two options one linkage eliminates two options because there is not one out not or two out so if one sentence and if two sentences are connected both of them cannot be the odd one out you can be sure the two eliminated like that so that is very that makes our work very simple so what we are finding is the earliest iconography of buddhism did not use an actual representation of buddha all right so that is one thing uh, one theory is that because the lion is the simple uh, the one theory is that it is because the lion is the symbol of the buddha uh, so uh, okay now uh, see this has a keyword called because right so this is uh, this is explaining a reason now this is critical because if something explains a reason you can always find what uh, for one sentence for what is the precedence what is the antecedent for which it is giving this reason so if a reason is being given there is a statement for which this justification or reason is being given right so what is this uh, reason trying to justify so one theory is that because the lion is the symbol of the buddha all right so uh, let us see uh, where can we find uh, this so yeah let us just try to see what it is reasoning so one theory is that because the lion is the symbol of the buddha okay now it might be that this is the first sentence of the paragraph and what it is referring to is not there in this entire thing right and it seems to be the case because none of these sentences make sense with this right so what we will do is we will instead just look for uh, another link this test has failed so you always keep multiple tests handy so you can uh, solve it uh, like uh, if one test fails you can put a second test third test fourth test verify it so that's how you do the earliest iconography of buddha did not use an actual representation of buddha all right so yeah it might have uh, been done out of a, a sense of re uh, reverence right so uh, this uh, i don't think that uh, this and this sentence go together right so this it can refer to this or this so the lion is the uh, king of beast in most cultures and mythologies okay now mark this word now i'll mark this word it might have been done so some action is being performed by uh, some action is being performed right so but here lion is the king lion is this is uh, this is a verb but this is not an action being performed right it's just that this verb is just there to help it's not the principal kind of thing right so it is the main verb in this sentence but is is always like the form of be so is is not someone doing something is means it it is a fact it exists it is true is is not someone doing something so is is an exceptional verb so uh, this done cannot connect to is so what is being done one theory is that it is because the lion is the symbol again is cannot be done this is not an action is is not an action it's merely existing it's not an action being performed so uh, the earliest iconography of buddha did not use now finally we have a verb use proper verb so uh, that uh, this can be true or uh, i think the whole art of uh, depicting deities in uh, uh, stone did not exist at that time so i think uh, this might also uh, be true right so th the whole uh, art of depicting deities did not exist at that time so this is one right now uh, now let me see what uh, we can do so if you see the earliest iconography of buddhism did not use an actual representation of buddha right so if the earliest iconography of buddhism did not use the uh, use an actual representation of buddha so this is an act that is being performed right not using but if you see the whole uh, art of depicting deities in stone did not exist again exist is another verb but it conveys the same sense as is right this conveys the same sense as is so i don't think that this is uh, uh, you know uh, this is something that can be done so i think done will connect here so i have established a linkage now let me see the earliest iconography of buddhism did not use an actual representation of buddha so i think that this act this act uh, is justified by it might have been done 
so you don't represent a god because you think that nothing can compare to that god so you don't represent them with a stone that is one idea one belief so this these two sentences are connected so these cannot be the odd one out so i have eliminated that now one theory is that because the lion is the symbol of the buddha okay so uh, these two uh, these two are eliminated because these two uh, cannot be the odd one out because they are connected they are part of the passage so the whole art of depicting uh, deities in stone did not exist at that time in india so uh, depicting uh, okay now this is simple uh, synonym establishment you need to establish that okay two things are synonym i mean making the same sense depicting deities in stone is an act of uh, actual actual representation right actual representation iconography that means making idols so these two sentences are connected by meaning these two sentences are connected by uh, action these two sentences are connected by meaning right so these two cannot be the wrong ones either i cross it off all right so what we have here finally is that this is uh, these two, four four sentences are gone and the sentence that i suspect now is this this is this seems to be the imposter sentence now let me verify it i'll not just rush with the answer let me read it and try to fit it in in somehow fit it just match it with each of the four and see if it fits the lion is the king of the beast in most cultures and mythologies right so let us see if this fits so lion is the king of beast in most most cultures and mythologies does it make sense with one it might have been done out of a sense of reverence no like a uh, lion is the king of beast in most cultures and mythologies but there is nothing being done so it doesn't fit with this right Uh, one theory is that it is because the lion is the symbol of the buddha so it seems kind of uh, you know uh, the lion is the king of beasts in most cultures and mythologies so if it is the king of beasts what relation does it have with buddha right buddha uh, you can say you can uh, you could argue that uh, buddha is the supreme being in uh, buddhism so lion is the supreme being in uh, the, you know the animal kingdom so it can be uh, the king of beasts in most cultures and mythologies so see your argument is correct but that is not the point of putting this line in the passage right so while you are arguing that there is no continuity uh, with this here there needs to be a sentence explaining that since this, that is the missing link that is not there so this shows that they are very clever the question set is what they have done they have actually taken a sentence from the same article all five sentences are from the same article but one of them is from a previous paragraph so that is very confusing right so what what you are seeing why do you think that these two sentences look So similar because they are from the same article. All five sentences are from the same article. So a difficult question will always have all five sentences, even the imposter sentence from the same article, but from a different paragraph of the same article. So now there is a missing link, right? Always remember this missing link. The lion is the king of beasts in most cultures and mythologies. Now there should be something explaining, like uh, Buddha is, uh, uh, you know, uh, there should there should be a syllogism, a logical deduction, like uh, a medium between those two. so if the lion is the king of beasts in most cultures and mythologies there should be something explaining like the buddha is the supreme being in buddhism or buddha has uh, you know commanded or lion is respected for that something so that is uh, missing here right so uh, you cannot uh, see if, if this sentence was there it could have been the link but then it is saying it might have been done so they talks of reverence it could have been the missing link but it is not since it talks about done so there is no continuity in tone so this is missing tonal linkage so this sentence doesn't fit with uh, this this sentence doesn't fit with this now does it fit with the third sentence the whole art of depicting deities in stone did not exist at that time in india absolutely not like no no relation at all just eliminate this now final sentence the earliest iconography of buddhism did not use an actual representation of buddha no lion no king no beast no uh, there is culture and mythology there right but nothing of lion king and beast so principal part of the sentence is irrelevant so these two are very easy to eliminate so it it also passed our second test it does not fit with any of the sentences logically right now third test to make double sure don't use three test in the exam use any one or two max don't use three test i'm doing this just to show you so what you can do now is that uh, the earliest uh, the line is the king of beasts in most cultures and mythologies now just read the whole paragraph and try to make sense of what the narrative is decode the narrative so the narrative uh, you can uh, you know uh, finding the summary is a good way to solving odd one out so odd one out questions can be also found uh, solved by summary and summary questions can also be found uh, solved by uh, you know 
uh, odd one out can also be solved by para jumbling right so these are interchangeable like they will help you i am not saying that they will give you the answer but you can, it can help so what is the core of my article what is the summary of my article summary of my article is that uh, the lion is a symbol of the buddha but uh, the lion was used as a proxy because it was considered disrespectful to show buddha actually with his human features in stone that that was not a tradition earlier later it happened so the lion is the king of beast in most cultures and mythologies so the summary of the passage is about uh, buddha's representation that is at the heart of the passage uh, at the heart of this paragraph while this seems to be from a earlier paragraph where the emphasis was on lion right where the emphasis was on uh the lion but here it's about the emphasis is on why buddha is not depicted rather than emphasis being on lion so by three ways we have eliminated this sentence so this sentence is the alien sentence right so that is what uh, matters here right so we have cracked this uh, with three different ways all yielding the same answer converging and confirming our notion so thank you so much and hope to see you again join us in our next session thank you so much